Hey guys, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to make a cast iron pan handle cover. Stick around and I'll go through the process and how, uh, how I make these. Uh, what I have here is a back panel and a front panel pattern and I got a piece of, uh, these are English bridal, I got black and dark brown. But right now we're going to start tra uh, going to trace it out and so we're going to cut them. It's onto the leather and then you, then you cut it out. All right, we got the, the pattern transferred over to the leather. And what we're going to do now, we're going to cut them. We'll be right back after I get these all cut. All right, we got all the leather cut. What we're gonna do now, I don't want to bore you with cutting leather, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to bevel the bevel the edges on on the front, on this part and this part, and on and on the back of it. Because what I gotta do is we're gonna have to bevel them, stain them, and then we're gonna have to put them on the burser, the burser before I before I glue them together and sew them up. Do a little bit of sanding, hand sanding on them. Also, after I use this uh, edge beveler. I'll be right back. Next is I got the edges beveled, sanded down, sanded down on these on just these ends because this is where the, the pan handle is going to go like this, and then the cast iron pan is going to go in here. So I got to get these done first before I before I glue it and then uh, do all the rest of the edges. <clears throat> but we're going to die. We're going to die these two edges. Then we'll go in. We'll go out in the. Uh, we'll go out in the garage and uh, we'll. Bur I'll show you how we burst the edges of the uh, of the leather. This is Five Beans Professional Oil Dye. It's got oil in it. It works really well. <clears throat> Once this dries, what we'll do next, we'll go in the girl, we'll go out in uh, in the garage. The other got my shop split up in two different areas since I moved out to South Carolina, but we'll go out into the garage and uh, and burst up these edges. <clears throat> Before I uh, before we glue before we glue everything up before I then I can sew it all up and get everything get everything finished up. But what this is this is a this is called glycerin saddle soap. And what I do with it this is my way of burnishing. I put it and I add a little bit of water. I add a little bit of water to it. And then what I do is I wet the I wet the edges up on this. I wet the edges with the the water and the glycerin saddle soap. You know, what that does, it helps when I put it on this leather burger. The leather burger is right here. It's made of wood. Got it from a guy in England. Uh, and I melted it off. Uh, I got a burner over there. It's an old, uh, it's an old plumber's, uh, it's an old plumber's, uh, what is it called? A wet pot. And then I, I, mel I melted it in there and I put it in little cups. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it, but it makes the, uh, it, it really gives it a nice, nice uh, shiny edge to it, to the leather. Yeah, two edges burst. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna take this little, take my awl and I, I, I match up this piece of leather on this, the back and this is the front. And then you wanna put a little mark on here, scratch it in the leather so when you glue it, 
you don't go too far with the glue and on the bottom of these you almost got to got to mold them a little bit because when you sew them they're going to be they're going to be they're going to they're going to be have a little they're going to be they're going to have an area for that the pan handle to go in just makes it a little easier if you if you hand mold them a little bit than when you go to glue them when you go to stick them together they it works out a little bit better for you this is my hand homemade uh, glue pot made it out of a mason jar works pretty good this is uh, dabs contact cement that I get they usually get it from Home Depot and so what I'll do is I'll get all these glued up we'll get the edges all glued up here then once it dries and once it dries, we'll, we'll glue it together. It takes about, it's about 15 minutes to dry. <clears throat> I'll show you. I got, I should have a couple hanging here. Yeah, I got a couple hanging here. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a Jack's, I call it a Jack's app or a Black Jack, they call them. The police used to carry them from the 50s, in the 50s for protection. And they also have a, uh, here's another one. And then this is a coin sap. What it is, is you sew it together. It's got a grommet with a piece of para, paracord on it. And uh, it's a Sam Brown button washer. And inside of it, inside of it is coins. So you can put it in your pocket, you know, in case something, it's just for personal protection. Some states you could carry them. South Carolina, you can. But other states, it's, it's against the law to carry these. I can sell them. I used to sell these at a lot of gun shows in Illinois. State police would come up and they'd, I'd be selling gun belts and he'd pick them up and I go, they're sold as a novelty item. They sort of look at me, smile, and they go, I wish I could still carry these. But uh, I still make these on request. I still make those are all hand sewn and I pack them with uh, with lead shot. But uh, stick around once this dries, we'll, we'll uh, show you how I glue them all together. <clears throat> all right, we got them all glued. Glue's all dried. Almost forgot the uh, important part. The American flag, I stamped the back with American flag, and then of course, my battle axe on the front. But how I, how I glue these together, <clears throat> I like to start right at the bottom, try to try to give it a little bit of, because uh, the handle's gonna go inside it, because the back is bigger than the front. What you wanna do, you wanna go put it together like this. And as you go, you want to stick it together. Yeah, my main gig, I'm an independent insurance adjuster. It is just... It's winter time. It's feast or famine, so there's just uh, nothing coming in. There's been usually if you get some rains or something, you usually get some planes, but it's just been just been just been awful dead. So I mess around the shop a little bit. What I do? It's a little cobbler's hammer. It's almost like a little toy, but it works pretty good. And I like to take that on here. Pound the edges so the glue really sticks. So I gotta go and I gotta sand. We gotta sand these still. Back. I'm gonna sand these edges and then we'll come back and we'll uh, bevel the edges and then uh, then stain them. Then we'll then we'll burst them up. <clears throat> the edges uh, got the edges all sanded up. <clears throat> sand up. We're gonna do. We're gonna use the number two edge beveler here because it's a lot thicker. We got double the leather. It's like a quarter inch leather. All my gum belts are. Uh, Two pieces of uh, eight to eight to ten ounce leather glued and stitched together, so the gun belt comes out to about a good quarter inch, at least a quarter inch usually. So I'm doing right now is I'm beveling this edge.
it gets real, the leather gets really soft in the belly portion because I buy it. What I do is I buy I buy half hides. Might have some pictures. I got like a little gallery on my website. The website doesn't do too much, but it's just there for people to take a look look at. Or sometimes I'll get people to reach out. I sell more more most of my stuff down in Georgetown. But uh, I'm gonna get these edges um, dyed up, and then we'll go in the garage and we'll burst them up. Right, we got the uh, we got the edges we got the edges all uh, all dyed. It's all dry, ready to. Uh, Start burnishing these edges on the uh, on these two uh, <clears throat> pan handle holders. Inside, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sew these things up. We're gonna get ready to sew these up. I gotta, I gotta scrub a line in the uh, into the leather, <clears throat> and then what I'll do is I'll follow that when I uh, when I start sewing on the sewing machine. To give a shout out to Steve out in Oregon. I did, I did, I did receive the. Uh, did receive the stove and the old percolator. I really appreciate it, Steve. Very cool, dude. I'm going to, what we're going to do next is um, stick with me. I'm going to, we'll be back in a few minutes. I got to uh, get everything set up with the sewing machine. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start sewing these up. Uh, I'll do the brown first. We'll just use the black. It'll still look pretty cool. This machine is a CB, a Cowboy C, CB4500. The thread I'm using is a 277. It's a really heavy thread. I sew all my, even my wax canvas bags with, uh, with all the same thread. And you wanna do a back stitch. And then you come forward and it'll lock it in so it won't come apart. If you're, if you're doing leather work and you're hand sew, you can hand sew these up too. But uh, I've hand sewn for many years. My hands are just, I'm in my uh, mid, to, mid to late 50s now. And uh, it just beats my, it just really beats my hands up. Plus the sewing machine is the way to go. I do hand sew the, uh, the, the jack saps or the black jacks. I do sew, all that gets hand sewn. Cause I gotta fill up. What I do is I'll fill them, and then pack it with the lead shot. And then as I as I go, it um, and then sew it up a little bit more. A little slow around the corners there, but uh, if you ever get one of these machines, if you're a leather guy, little practice. It's a really awesome. It's a really fantastic machine. I got this one out of uh, Toledo, Ohio, from uh, Bob Kobar. Kobar at Toledo Sewing Machines. If you're interested in any kind of sewing machine or thread, he's the man to talk to.
we go go reverse and then forward again and it gives it like a it doubles it up on both sides at the same thing on there and it helps hold it together really well but uh we'll we're almost finished uh stick around for a few more minutes all right guys these are uh, these are bit of just finishing them up that's the black came up pretty nice it's just scrap leather we got the american flag on the back this is the brown then it goes right on the handle just like this. So when you're cooking, you got to do it. If the pan's hot, you just grab it like that, and it works really well. You won't burn your hand. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool little thing Don Gonzalez got out there. You can, what it can do too is sometimes I'll put a grommet right in the middle here. Then you could you could you could hang it on stuff. Uh, it came out. They came out pretty good. But uh, that's the final product. Hey, I really appreciate everyone watching, and uh, have a great day.